in this video i will explain you about coulomb's law so in the previous lectures we have seen that when we are keeping a charge for example positive and negative it's a charge q1 and it's a charge q2 they will be an attraction so positive will be attracted by negative and negative will be attracted by positive so there is some force this we are the nature is attractive and when we have two positive charges q1 and q2 we know that q1 will be repelling q2 in this direction q2 will be repelling q1 in this direction so there is a force and the nature is repulsion now how to get the value of the force how can we measure the force in between two charges that has been defined by coulombs now according to coulombs law it consists of multiple statement first statement is force in between two charges q1 and q2 so these are two charges say for example so force in between q1 and q2 force in between 1 and 2 so force is between two charges right so that is nothing but is directly proportional to product of the charges this is magnitude of product of charges what do i mean by this see let's say i have one positive and two positive the product of charges is plus 2 but at the same time if i am replacing one positive as two positive this thing is the same thing two positive here the force will be more because product of charges is 2 into 2 4 now at the same time if i am increasing both the values to 3 plus 3 and plus 3 again the force will increase what is the product plus 3 into plus 3 is equal to 9 now this value if i am changing plus 2 to 1 by 4 and if i am increasing plus 1 to 4 what will be the change in force 4 into 1 by 4 is 1 previously 1 into 2 it was 2 so this case was heavier okay this was higher force so force is directly proportional to product of charges next thing is force in between two charge is inversely proportional to distance square of the distance in between them this is called as inverse square law inversely proportional to square of distance so let's say we have two charges q1 and q2 in this case force will be more the same q1 if you are keeping here now the distance is higher as compared to this which force will be more conceptually we can say that this one is more because these are kept at smaller distance but this this one is higher distance as distance reduces force increases so these two have combined in one equation so that force in between 1 and 2 is directly proportional to q1 q2 divided by r square now how to change the proportionality into equation by multiplying with a constant so f12 so this implies that f12 is equal to constant into so c into q1 q2 by r square so when i multiplied with a constant this became an equation now what do what is the meaning of 1 2 one 2 is nothing but force offered on 1 by 2 so force f 1 2 in between q1 and q2 is nothing but force exerted on 1 on this by 2 this is f 1 2 so if both both of them are positive see if q1 is positive if q2 is positive in which way q2 will be exerting force on one in this way so here r is the position vector r is the distance in between them it's a, it that is representing a position that is a vector right that will both have direction and magnitude so here this distance r when we are calculating it for f12 this is from 1 from 2 to 1 okay so f r 1 2 so instead of taking it as r we have to take it as r 1 2 because this distance is in between 1 and 2 or it is the same distance in between 2 and 1 but the direction is opposite say for example force exerted on 2 by 1 so 1 will be exerting a force in this direction so that is from 1 to 2 so r 
from where from 1 to 2 from this till here so for f21 we will mention r21 for f12 that is r12 because f12 is nothing but force on 1 by 2 so that is from 2 till 1 that vector we have to consider so this we will write as c into q1 q2 divided by r12 the whole square so this is the force we know that force is a vector quantity right so how to represent it as vector f12 this is very important f12 is a vector so vector will be represented with an arrow on the top is equal to a constant into q1 is a scalar so q1 into q2 divided by this we will mention as a vector that is r12 vector so i will mention if I am mentioning it as R12 square, so basically it's a scalar here, right? Numerator is also scalar, but LHS is vector. So how can I bring a vector here? I will mention R12 cap here. Now, what is R12 cap? R12 cap is a value that has got one magnitude, but this is having a direction. See, we have a quantity that has no direction here. But this is having a direction. So I should bring a direction here. So the moment I multiply these two, I am getting a value that has got magnitude and direction. So this can be represented in this way. Okay. So this is the value in vector notation. Now, we know one more thing that R12 is nothing but minus of R21. How can we prove that? See what is R12? Position vector in between 1 and 2. That is from 2 to 1. This is R12. See this is very important. This is R12. Now what is R21? R21 is this one. 2 to 2 from 1. From 1 to 2. We know that the magnitude are same. But why? How the magnitude will be same? Because it's the same charge here and the distance in between the charge is the same. So this value and this value is the same. But the direction is just the opposite. So R12, if it is in positive direction, if it is plus 5, R21 can be taken as minus 5. So R12 is this one, right? So if this is plus 5, 5, this can be taken as minus 5 just for an example okay so these two will be opposite now i have explained you this to give you a very important concept from coulomb's law so that we will learn from the force in between two and one so now force exerted on one by two i have explained now force exerted on two by one what is that value so it's the same charge so c into q1 q2 instead of q1 q2 this will be q2 q1 divided by distance in between them it's square so r what is that on 2 by 1 right so that is r21 the whole square so this is magnitude of r21 square right this one is also magnitude of r2 the value of position in between the value of the distance in between 1 and 2 it's square so q1 into q2 this is q2 into q1 now the whole thing is a scalar q2 into q1 it's a scalar this is just a number square will be again scalar now multiplied by r in between 2 and 1 right so this will be 2 1 cap see the magnitude are same right here so q2 q1 can be write, uh, written as q1 q2 anyway it's magnitude right the distance in between the number 5 it's square right so if it is positive or negative anyway square will be a positive value and, and anyway this is modulus magnitude okay so i can rewrite it as c into q1 q2 divided by r21 and r12 magnitude is the same so i'm going to rewrite it as r12 square magnitude of r12 square this multiplied by r21 cap but see both the magnitude are same but see the direction here it is r12 here it is r21 
which means the force that exerted by 2 on 1 is equal to force exerted by 1 on 2. The values are same, the magnitude is same, but the difference is with the direction. Here it is R21, here it is R12. This cannot be equated because that represents direction. One in one direction and other one is exactly the opposite. Which is this law? Newton's third law. So this obeys Newton's third law which means F21 is equal to F12 but it is opposite to the direction. See, force in between 2 and 1 and 1 and 2 is the same thing but the direction is opposite. What is the meaning of this? Exerted by 1 on 2. Exerted by 2 on 1. Same magnitude, opposite direction. Okay. Now, we will see more concept from Coulomb's law. What is the value? F12. I am going to take only the magnitude here. So, C into Q1, Q2 divided by R square. Now, what is the value of C? And what are the values that, what are the values that C, what are the properties that C depends on? C is dependent on the medium in which the charges are placed. Say for example, Q1 and Q2 is placed in air now. And we are doing an experiment. We will get a force. Now the same thing is inserted in a liquid. Water, the value will be different. Same thing with the same value and same distance is inserted in immersed in kerosene the value will be different same thing if you are doing it in maybe hydrogen gas the value will be different so that that is how the value of c get changed when we are changing the medium where we are placing the charges then the value of force will change now so in the air, what we have done, we have kept a charges at a distance of 1 meter. So Q1 was 1 coulomb and Q2 was 1 coulomb. So what will be the force? Force will be is equal to C into, this one is 1 coulomb, this one is 1 coulomb. So 1 into 1 divided by distance in between two charges, 1 meter, so 1 square. So we will get the value of C. So in air, when we are keeping two one coulombs at a distance of one meter apart, we will measure a force and that is the value of C. And the value has found to be 9 into 10 power 9 Newton. What is, the, what is the meaning of this? When we are keeping two one coulombs in air at a distance of one meter, then this will exert a force on this the value will be 9 into 10 power 9 Newton in this direction. And also this will exert a force on this in this direction and the value is 9 into 10 power 9 Newton. Now that is the value. So only when we are defining in this way, we will get the value of C. But we have to get the unit of C. How to get the unit of C? C from this equation is equal to F into R square divided by Q1 into Q2. Now unit of F is Newton. Unit of R is meter. R is nothing but distance, right? So this will become meter square. Divided by Q1 and Q2 are charges. Where its unit are, units are C and C. So this will be C square. So the value will be Newton meter square C power minus 2. So when we are doing in this way, the value is this much Newton. But when we are defining C as a unit, C as a number, then we have to say 9 into 10 power 9 Newton meter square coulomb power minus 2. Can we use the value of C? Can you can we use the same value of C for all the cases? No. Only when the charges are placed in air, we can use the value of C as 9 into 10 power 9 Newton meter square coulomb power minus 2. When the mediums get changed, the value of C will also change. So all these things are important. That is, this obeys Newton's third law, its vector representation, either this or this and what are the properties that C depends on. These are very important. Okay. Thank you.